In response to Moscow's persistent attacks on Ukraine's electricity infrastructure, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg accused Moscow of seeking to exploit winter as a weapon of war and urged member states to increase their financial support for Ukraine. As winter temperatures plunged below zero, Russian strikes on Ukrainian infrastructure have left millions of Ukrainians without heat, water, or electricity. NATO ministers gathering in Bucharest, Romania, issued a statement on Tuesday. Denouncing Russia's persistent and unjustifiable strikes on Ukrainian civilian and energy infrastructure, and reaffirming a decision made in 2008 that Ukraine will eventually join the alliance. As allies pledged more weapons and equipment to aid with the restoration of power and heat for Kiev, Stoltenberg declared that NATO's door is open. According to Stoltenberg, Russia does not have a veto over nations entering. Dmitry Kaleba, the foreign minister of Ukraine, joined the two-day meeting of NATO foreign ministers and urged for an immediate supply of weaponry, particularly modern air defense systems, to come faster, faster, quicker, transformers and generators will allow us to repair our system and energy grid and give people good living conditions. According to Kaleba, increased military aid, such as air defense systems and ammunition, is a top priority for NATO's foreign ministers. However, since they also talk about non-lethal assistance, diplomats have noted supply and capacity difficulties. A portion of this non-lethal assistance, which includes items like fuel, medical supplies, winter gear, and drone jammers, has been provided under a NATO aid program to which allies can contribute and which Stoltenberg hopes to expand. NATO will be Ukraine's ally for as long as necessary. In an address in Bucharest, Stoltenberg vowed, we won't back down. The only way, he continued, for Ukraine to proceed militarily would be to obtain the ideal conditions for negotiations to start. Several ministers from the 30-member alliance, including Finland and Sweden, who are attempting to obtain full membership pending Turkish and Hungarian ratifications, concurred with Stoltenberg's remarks. For all of us, the upcoming months will be a major test. It is existential for Ukraine, while it is moral for us. As long as it is essential, we must continue to assist Ukraine. Said Rastislav Kaser, the foreign minister of Slovakia, according to Robert Hunter, a former U.S. ambassador to NATO, more could have been done than just patch up the damage caused by Russia's aggression in Ukraine. From Washington, D.C., Hunter told Al Jazeera, it's surprising that the coalition led by the U.S. has not done more so far in terms of anti-drone and anti-missile defenses. While Stoltenberg has pledged a variety of actions to protect Ukraine, Al Jazeera's Andrew Simmons, reporting from Bucharest, noted that this is still an alliance of 30 governments in which unanimity is the rule. There are coalitions of the willing because not all states concur that Ukraine should receive military assistance, according to Simmons. There will be assurances of both actual military assistance from specific governments as well as non lethal assistance from NATO itself. The main problem at the moment is that the war has become winterized, that Russia is using the cold as a weapon, that the country is being attacked specifically for its infrastructure. And that there are blackouts all around Ukraine.